Life and death depend on this discourse. That's what makes the Gita special. That's what is happening on the battlefield. Beautiful, breathtaking, real. Namaste Acharya Ji. So myself, Anish Kumar Singh, I'm uh, right now pursuing my master's final year from uh, National Institute of Technology, Warangal. Sir, actually, uh, I'll be studying for a PhD in the United States of America at the University of Minnesota. Just after four months, I'll be starting my PhD. So first thing first, it's a long program. And I think uh, it could have a social culture impact on my understanding. So coming to the question, like it is actual for settling abroad. Obviously, I'm going for study, but it, I'm talking about actually the uh, settling abroad by uh, like um, my motivation for now is to come back to India after completing my studies. For now, it's my motivation. However, when I tell to my teachers, my parents and my relatives about it, so they usually tell me that you will definitely stay there because I spoke with one of my teachers the day before yesterday, I spoke with him and he had uh, returned from a postdoctoral fellowship from Israel. He's a very experienced guy. So he said that it is extremely rare for people to return to the country and most students stay there. So if I conclude my question, like being a nationalist, how can I contribute to my nation either by coming back to India or being settled there myself? Like if you see Mahatma Gandhi studying abroad, coming back to India and helping the nation, then what should be my motivation to come back to my mother country after completing my studies? Sir? So. Yes, too many assumptions, too many definitions in the question. I cannot uh, just admit those uh, assumptions and definitions and base my answer on that. What is nationalism? What is this love for mother country you are talking of? So in my respect, like uh, I am a research aspirant and I have to do something on anti-cancer drug and something. So. For me, it's like kind of a designing something, a product, maybe a pharmaceutical something, which can be uh, cheap, cheaply available and to that can afford all the sets of people and can cure any sort of diseases. So you want to bring those useful technologies to the people of India? Definitely, sir. If I could learn something from there, definitely I would. All right. What stops you then? So I think... Uh, the financial aspects and the uh, they even give some all sorts of facilities, especially the research things and economical, mental peace and all those things. Work ethics, the culture, work culture, uh, I heard of in US. And even when I used to discuss with my relatives and the people who are already experienced and went for the studies, they usually tell that your mentality will be impacted in the long course of five years. I'm not getting it. You want to bring those technologies to the people of India, wonderful. What stops you? So you go there, you complete the program, right? And that empowers you. And using your knowledge and your resources and your network, you then bring those benefits to the Indian people. What stops you? Sir, I think like uh, they say usually in the discussion sort of people, they say that I do not Why? know what they say. A thousand people say a thousand things. You tell me what stops you. So I think their financial aspect and their respect to the research and culture and both. What do you mean by financial aspect? What do you mean by financial aspect? You have knowledge, you have uh, a postgraduate degree, rather what, a doctorate? Yes, sir. Yes. And uh, India is no more a starving nation. There is enough money here as well. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean by the financial aspect exactly? So, like uh, if you say about the earning things, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, respect of the uh, the work culture they provide. And no, no, no. Uh, work culture, work culture will come to, first of all, the financial thing. What do you mean by the financial aspect? Is that what stops you? How? I think that might stop me. I am not sure about that because no. the fancy... How can we just speculate about something without knowing it? What do you mean 
by a financial aspect to the blockage how much money do you need and will that money not be available in india available sir so there can presumably be no financial aspect why is this still a concern with you if you want to come here money is hardly a problem greed can be a problem money is not a problem money and greed are not the same thing definite. right definite. the money that you need is definite greed is obviously indefinite so money is taken care of what next i think the research facilities the facilities they do provide like the instrumentation facilities and the research arena they uh, the work culture they do provide for the respect for a uh, resource things and the funding they do provide on the project uh, we work on that so i'm not sure about that see i do not know your field so i do not exactly know the kind of disparity in research avenues in your field between the us and india hmm? so i cannot really comment on that but uh, what i know is that india is fast catching up right every 5 years things are changing today things are not what they were like in 2015 or 17 hmm? so the gap is narrowing another 5 years the gap would be still narrower and uh, not only does the gap narrow down on its own we do require able people to consciously narrow down the gap hmm? first of all there are the market forces right that bridge the gap and then there are people think of let's say somebody like homi jahangir baba think of all the architects of uh, the indian technological renaissance post independence india hardly had any facilities any institutions they helped build it up they didn't find facilities they created facilities ha huh? so I, i obviously do not want to put the onerous task of developing an institution on you i'm just saying that india is in a position where institutions are being created institutions are being empowered hmm? uh, indians want to be among the best especially when it comes to science and technology and research uh, why not uh, contribute to the indian quest hmm? so but that's you see an an individual decision you can choose between the the comfort and the ready made facilities that the us offers or you could choose between the the chaos and the conflict uh, go for that and uh, as you go for that be a part of uh, of the building up process hmm? it depends on your love that's why that the, that was that was the first question i asked you what do you mean by uh, love for uh, the mother country in your own words and nationalism hmm? you must be clear about that what is a nation is the nation really a valuable entity and uh, if you know about nationalism if you understand india you also know whether india deserves to be served hmm? and then the decision would be easier
right? People don't return because they never belonged in the first place. Hmm? It's not as if they went away. They were actually never here. Just being coincidentally born at a certain place does not make you a native. To be an Indian is a tough ask. I do not think of India as having 140 crore Indians. That's the population of the state. That's not the number of Indians. Hmm? You want to have an official stat. You could say, well, demographics 140 crore. Uh, that's all right. Indians, really, however, are probably no more than a few hundred alive, maybe a few thousand, and an equal number dead. And these Indians are scattered all over the world. Many of them have never even once come to the geographical position called India. They are still Indians. Hmm? So, you have to know India. You have to know India. Just by being born here, you won't develop love. You can develop some kind of an attachment to your territory, but that is not love. An attachment does not have great power. So when America lures, attachment is overpowered. And people fly away and settle in the US. I repeat, just by being born somewhere in India, you do not become an Indian. You do not really grow love for India because love requires understanding. To us, India is mostly about cheering the Indian cricket team or sloganeering against rival countries. That's not what nationalism is, right? If you just want to return to the place where you were born, there is nothing great or sublime in this desire, this intention. Being territorial is something all animals have. All animals in existence have a certain feeling for their own territory. So there is nothing great about the desire to return to your birthplace. If India is just the birthplace of your body to you, then there is nothing special in India. What is India really? Figure that out and then you will know whether it is of importance to serve India. And when you know something is important, then you devise means. then you need not necessarily be present within the geographical limits of India. You probably could be anywhere. 
equally you need not be at other places for reasons of greed a missionary travels across the world that's very different from somebody migrating to another place in search of better financial opportunities you understand the difference between a missionary and a migrant missionaries too are globe trotters they leave their birthplace is it all too too abstract huh i'm not even attempting to solve it in these 5 10 minutes i just want to begin a process for you hmm? think on these things <laughs>